when MAGA Republicans in one state find a funny new trick to deny voters their legal and due representation, other states are watching. Some are watching to duplicate the anti-democratic move that they made. Some are going to try to top it. We are going to try to stop it. And that's, that's right. why we're here in Chicago. That's right. Thank you so much for coming with us. And we are so proud of our co-sponsors. And I want to thank them all here. The Rainbow Push Coalition. Yeah. The Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. ACLU Illinois. Woo! Common Cause Illinois. Woo! The Young Democrats of Chicago. Woo! And the League of Women Voters Chicago. Woo! We are across the political spectrum in many ways as a group, but we are united today. And uh, I want to move on to our speakers because we have a lot of folks with a lot of great things to say. We're going to start with two state senators who have helped make Illinois a model in passing gun reforms and in standing up against the very repression that we're talking about. Senator Robert Peters and Christina Passioni Zayas. Good evening. I'm State Senator Christina Passioni Sayas representing the northwest side of Chicago. Homegrown Chicago, born and bred. I think when I reflect on what the Tennessee Three did, I can't but help to think about MLK's famous words that when we are silent, about the things that matter that's when we begin to die yep and it is unconscionable to think that three individuals who were duly elected through the democratic process to do exactly what they did which was to push back against lobbying and special interests and stand for lives and liberation and the liberty to speak on that. We must protect democracy and we must combat the assault on it. We must name the racism that is currently at play. It is systemic, it is pervasive, it is as clear and present as the air that we breathe. And the fact that two of the three individuals were expelled, and I know that the representative was being delicate, but I'm here not to mince words. It was most definitely racist. That's right. Those decisions were based on white supremacy. When we don't name the problem, we are not going to be able to articulate solutions. That's right. When we go to the doctor, we want a precise diagnosis about the problems and the conditions that we're experiencing so that we can develop a treatment plan to go in and correct action. So we have to name those particular things. And I just want to say that all of this is based on the multiple lives that have been lost this action was provoked by what happened in nashville it's compounded by what happened today in louisville and it's certainly prevalent every day here in chicago yep all corners experience it and the fact is is that gun violence is absolutely solvable when we address root causes, when we have the ability to demonstrate courage to take the decisive and deliberate actions to address at those root causes. And so these three brave representatives who stood up against the powerful gun lobby and two of them faced expulsion, when we stand silent we are ultimately being complicit 
and approving that type of behavior. And so it's gonna take all of us to do this work, to constantly raise our voice, but engage in the deliberate targeted action so that we're not just doing thoughts and prayers. We are certainly delivering policy and transformation. And the brother that I always rely on to lock arms in this work in the Senate chamber is none other than my dear friend, Senator Robert Peters. You got this, brother? No, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to do that real quick. Let me, let me just, all right, just, uh, I'm lanky. Uh, <laughs> We're good. All right. Thank you. I'm Senator Robert Peters of the 13th District. Uh, and I just want to say I'm sick and tired of the authoritarianism of this far right movement. That's right. This authoritarian far right movement is doing nothing to keep us safe in parades, in theaters, on the streets, in the park, anywhere we go. A place where we may pray, where we may celebrate where we're with family and friends. This far-right authoritarian, authoritarian movement protects only a privileged few. That's right, preach it. It makes me sick and tired that they make arguments about how CRT or teaching black history is bad. Woo. Attacking trans folks every day, trans kids every day. Attacking our reproductive rights. That's right. Attacking our voice. And then they sit there and tell us that they know what it means to keep us safe. They don't. And what they did in Tennessee was a next step of a hostile, authoritarian, right-wing takeover. That's right. Targeting two young black legislators and kicking them out. And what I know is that when we organize, yeah. and that when we fight, yeah. we win. Yes. Yeah. Woo! They're not gonna bring their Janu January 6th style politics into the halls of power if we keep fighting back. We can stop them. I also wanna point out something. In Illinois, we always talk, you hear people, they always talk down about Illinois. You hear people, oh, Illinois, Illinois, Illinois Republicans love to talk bad about Illinois and Chicago. That's right. Except we assault, we banned assault weapons. We banned ghost guns. We have progressive super majorities fighting to make sure that people's rights are protected. We're doing everything we can when it comes to actually having true safety. That's something that we're doing in Illinois. And so when I think about what's happening in Tennessee or what we're doing in Illinois, is that DC needs to step up. That's right, that's right. There is no third way when you're facing far right authoritarian hate. Here, here, you brother. can't third way it. That's right. These people are not here to negotiate. They're here to take hostage. Yep. And so I, I, I say this as a senator in Illinois and I say this as someone who's an organizer. We have a lot of work ahead of us but we in Illinois are something to have pride in. When we think about what we've accomplished, it's something to have pride in. The reason why we stand in solidarity with Tennessee, or we're gonna stand in solidarity with Louisville, or we're gonna stand in solidarity with a small town in Texas. The reason we're gonna do that is because in Illinois, we come from a place of love. Amen, brother. And we need that love all over this country. We need that love in DC. And we need to understand that love doesn't just happen because of words, it happens with power. And we need to continue to build that power. So I'm, I'm glad to stand here in solidarity. I'm grateful for everybody here. I'm grateful for folks to organize with this. And I want folks to know whether they're in Tennessee, whether they're in Louisville, whether they're in New York, whether they're on the south or west side of Chicago, we're a place of love. And when we love each other and we organize and we fight, we kick some ass. So thank you. Yes. See why we're so proud of our leadership in Illinois? 
We are a model for the country. We're a blue oasis in the Midwest, but the more we work, the bigger that oasis is going to be. And I should remind you that if you go to IndivisibleChicago.com, you can join us and help do that work. The leadership with Illinois, it starts at the top. Governor Pritzker and Lieutenant Governor Stratton have been amazing leaders, progressive leaders, who aren't afraid to speak out when they see the injustice that we see, who aren't afraid to put our children above guns. I can't believe I have to say that, but in Illinois, maybe you don't, but in other states you do. We value our children, we value education, we value safe spaces, and as Senator Peters said, we value love. And that's why we love our Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. All right, so let me take this off because I need to ask you all, how are you all feeling tonight? Right. Anybody else fired up? Hell yeah. Anybody else fired up? Fire I heard this was a rally. So we are here today to lift up our voices. So let me begin by saying I'm Juliana Stratton. I use she, her pronouns. And I just want to thank all of the organizers and all of you for being out here tonight to lift up your, your voices. I also want to thank these incredible leaders, our friends and partners in the General Assembly and everyone else who is speaking tonight. I stand before you this evening as a mother, as someone who has personally experienced gun violence firsthand. I stand here as a proud black woman from the south side of Chicago, as a former state representative in the Illinois House and as the first black lieutenant governor of our wonderful state. And too many times throughout my life, I have been told that by people in power that I don't belong or that there's no room for me to have a seat at the table. Oh. So like all of you, I watched in horror last week right. as Tennessee Republicans expelled two black lawmakers from their state house. They didn't want to have a conversation nope. about common sense gun laws like the ones we've passed right here in Illinois. They didn't want to hear from these amazing, powerful young people who packed the state house to say we need to see change and we need it now. And they surely didn't want these two young, brilliant, black lawmakers to challenge the status quo. But here's the thing, and I need you all to give me a little energy when I say this, that conversation will be had. That's right. We will not be silent. That's right. And whether you live in Tennessee, or whether you live in Illinois, or anywhere in between, everyone here tonight knows that what we saw last week was an affront to our democracy. Fascism. I want you to raise your hand if you, like me, well, let me say what it is first. <laughs> raise your hand if you have been personally impacted by gun violence. Raise your hand if you are sick and tired of seeing the inaction that led to Louisville today, right. to Nashville last right. week, to Highland Park just last 4th right. of July, and to the daily headlines of what's happening on the south and west sides of Chicago. If you're sick of it, then we're here tonight to raise our voices. Yeah. We will not be silenced. When I see those who are refusing to engage in the substance of the debate about gun violence, but are more concerned about punishing and silencing two black lawmakers, then I get fired up. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to stand for it. That's right. So here's what I want to say. If you're fired up too, then join me. Join me in turning your purpose your pain into purpose. Join me in standing up to those who want to take us backward. And let me just say to Representative Justin Jones and to Justin Pearson, who on Wednesday we will say, Representative Justin Pearson, Woo! let me just say, you have friends in Illinois. That's right. We yeah. have your back and we will always stand with you. Thank you, everyone. You made one important, you made many important points, but I want to follow up on one thing because when she, when Lieutenant Governor asked,
class who has been personally impacted by violence, I would add, who has not yet been personally impacted by gun violence? Because we are all in danger. That's the message today from Louisville. That's the message last week from Tennessee and the week before from somewhere else and next week from somewhere else. Every day. But I want to introduce now Brenda Mitchell who has been impacted by violence. Sadly, she is a co-lead of the Moms Demand Action Illinois. She's also a senior fellow of, every, of the Every Town Survivor Network. The fact that we have a survivor network, the fact that this whole infrastructure exists, tells us what I just said. We are all today either victims or not yet victims until we stop the violence and get guns off the street. Brenda, I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you for sharing with us. You know, my next step is to say amen because I'm also a pastor. Um, amen, sister. But I stand before you as a mother who has lost her son to gun violence. When it happened, I always talked about my good son. Not that anybody else's son was any better or less than my son, but he was mine. And he was my good son that was taken from me a week after I had sent his brother overseas for his third tour of duty in Iraq and in Afghanistan to, for Iraqi freedom. That I would have the irony of losing a son a week later in a free country. You didn't hear what I said? I lost my other son who had taken his brother to the airport, wished him well, understood the prayers that had been prayed, and a week later I had to call and bring my son home to bury his brother in a free country. I lost a brother to gun violence. I saw the effect of that on my mother and I knew what I did not want to do. I understood what I had to do. Kenneth's voice would not be silent because his mother was still standing. And as long as his mother is still standing, Kenneth is still speaking. Don't put a period behind my son's name. Because as long as I'm standing, I'm standing and walking in the purpose that I have been called to. And I'm thankful that I don't let my voice get silent by the nonsense, it roars at that time. If you think that you're burying our children in a free country, and it's okay for you to silence our representation, behold our sons and our daughters whose blood runs in the streets across this country. And if you believe that these young men that have become, that have been allowed by the grace of God to become men and to stand and walk in their purpose without fear that we will have them silenced, that you would take away our representation, you are sorely mistaken. Yeah. Sorely yeah. mistaken. People of color, have lived through three pandemics. The one that's still prevalent and raging is gun violence. Right. right. The other one we have lived and are still navigating through COVID. The other, if you think we don't notice, we've noticed for a long time, is white supremacy. Yep. It did not just come on the scene today or yesterday. When we wake up tomorrow, it will return tomorrow, and we'll still be ready. Kenneth did not die in vain. These young men didn't select what they selected to do for their constituencies in vain. We stand with them, we stand for them, and you're in our face. We need you to leave. Thank you. See three. It's been a long time since I've seen, I don't know if I've ever seen a politician 
put it all on the line. Yep. They knew that they were up against the odds and they were willing to sacrifice it all. And you know, my mother tells me all the time, son, just do the right thing. God will have your back. And does God have their back? They're on their way back and they're standing on the enemy's shoulder. They have united America. And I think that they have made a difference in those people that want to call themselves Republican. But they're now realizing that this issue about gun violence is not about Republicans or Democrats, it's about life. Yep. And I'm calling on people and their parties to recognize, to make it a party about life. Leave the party of the NRA and join the party for life. Here, here, brother. That's I right. want to thank those Republicans. I mean, a man from the west side of Chicago who have been through things all you can ask for is for the enemy to show his head, to show his true colors so that we can attack him. And Lord knows that they show their true colors. Here, here. And now black and white, brown, gay, straight are standing with those brothers in Tennessee. I want to thank them. And you're right, Lieutenant Governor. We are here for the brothers and sisters in Tennessee. And I want to thank them for putting it all on the line. And when I grow up, I want to be just like them. <laughs> I am Bishop Tavis Grant, the National Executive Director of the Rainbow Push Coalition, and I represent the only African American who has single handedly registered 9 million voters, Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson. Make some noise for Reverend Jesse Jackson. I want to thank the organizers for allowing us to partner with them on this critical issue of eradicating this illness and this pandemic that is sweeping our country. We woke up one more day and one more morning to see it in Louisville, as we saw it in Nashville, as we've seen it over and over and over again. I personally have buried too many young people all over this country due to gun violence. This combination, this deadly combination of those who want to succeed from the union, those who practice white supremacy, those who want to suppress the very fundamental principles that make our country a great country, not just for some, but for all. This is the same crowd that wants to take away reproductive rights for women. That's right. This is the same crowd that wants to destroy quality public education. That's right. This is the same crowd that does not want ad adequate accessibility to health care. That's right. This is the same crowd that does not want to give full citizenship to those returning citizens after they paid their debt to society. Here, here, well, hell, brother. I don't know about you, I'm tired and I can't take it anymore. That's right. The blood of our children and our family members and our community members can no longer be ignored. The Tennessee Three, I, I grew up in a day, my family, my mother and my father moved to Memphis, Tennessee in 1968 after Dr. King was assassinated. I grew up in the shadow of the Lorraine Hotel. When I saw these two young and daring and bold legislators take a stand on the right side of history, and I saw them lift their voice and exercise their democratic right, we have something in this country called freedom of speech. And it works everywhere except in Tennessee. <laughs> and interestingly enough, these Republicans have done something that hasn't been done in a long time. They have brought LGBTQ together, black together, yep. white together, progressives together, and we are now making our voices heard all over America. We want something done now, and we can't wait any longer. 
And so this coming Thursday, we'll be standing in Nashville looking for these two legislators to be reinstated yeah. and put in their rightful place because you cannot overturn an election. I don't care how many tricks, how many scams, how many games you play. The electorate must be protected at all costs. That's right. So we look forward to them coming back to the state capital of the state of Tennessee. We actually look forward to them visiting Chicago in the next several days because this spirit that has made Chicago better because we elected Brandon Johnson, Woo! the next mayor of the city of Chicago. That's right. We are not through. Work is still at hand. I'm reminded of Lieutenant Governor, a house being on fire and community being up in arms, Frank, about what to do. They got on the telephone and dialed 911, called the fire department, and the fire department, Senator Peters, was, was late. They called the police department, and they were late. People across the street were trying to figure out, are we going to let the fire burn and allow lives to be lost? And one single gentleman made up his mind, I'm running in the fire while I have a chance. Came out of the fire and rescued the family, covered with smoke and soot. And they asked him, why did you put your life on the line? Couldn't you have waited for the police? Couldn't you have waited for the fire department? He said, I couldn't wait because I had to do something now. We want Washington, D.C. to know we can't wait. You got to do something now. We want America to know we can't wait. You must do something now. Say it with me. Do, do something, something now. now. Do, do something now. now. Do something 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 now. there be for a man who knows how to do things when they need to be done. We are so happy to have Frank Chapman here yeah. <laughs> from the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. In case you didn't know, that's the organization that moved across the city to organize candidates for the new police district council. Yeah. Frank knows how to do something now, and he's always doing something, and we're so glad to have him here. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Well, after all the thunder. <laughs> Here comes the lightning. <laughs> uh, one of the earlier speakers talked about diagnosing a disease and then coming up with a treatment. Uh, let me suggest that here in Chicago, we have found a the treatment is racism is a united fight against it. And if it don't be for that united fight against racism, we would not have now Brandon Johnson That's right. as the Mary Lake. We would not have now throughout this city in every police district civilian representatives yes. who can hold the police accountable for what they do and what they don't do. Yeah. So we're on to something here. But at the same time, we're not that far ahead of Tennessee. Mm. At the same time, uh, we can't really boast that Illinois is a bastion of freedom. That's right. At the same time, we have to be careful because Tennessee is a part of the United States of North America. And I want to know how come they aren't having a rally at the White House yeah. saying that this is wrong. See, that's, that's, that's what we got to pay attention to because we always are trying to see something that ain't there. Tennessee and what the racists did in Tennessee 
and what the NRA did in Tennessee. By the way, Tennessee is the birthplace of the Ku Klux Klan in the 20th century. Oh, and the NRA is their natural descendants. So we, we, we got to be clear. This goes on throughout the United States of North America. Gun violence. It ain't just about gun violence. It's about what those guns are used for and who those guns are used against. It's about genocide. The NRA talking about the right to, to, to bear arms. No, they're talking about the right to kill. Yeah, that's right. And the right to kill with military assault weapons. Yes. Yep. Military assault weapons. So I salute Justin Pearson and Justin Jones for having the courage to stand up against these hypocritical, rabid racists and to be joined by people there to call for what's rational and what's reasonable in terms of gun violence. So what we got to do? We got to stay united. And we got to fight this in terms of the unalienable right of people to stand up and speak out against injustice without being punished. Yeah. Without being punished. Particularly by the powers that be. Because some of these powers that be, they don't have no moral authority to punish anybody about nothing. That's right. Because they're committing crimes while we're standing here talking. <laughs> so let's let's stay united. Because the best slogan I ever heard in my life is the people united can never be defeated. 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 And that's you and me. Thank you again for coming out. Thanks to our sponsors and our speakers. And maybe you can't get to Tennessee, but you can help more directly by donating to Representatives Jones and Pearson, but also to the organizers on the ground in Tennessee who are doing the work we do to turn out the vote, elect more progressives, and send the GOP leaders packing so they are no longer leaders. Please go to indivisiblechicago.com slash Tennessee for the links of where to donate and to help the folks there turn that state around. Thank you so much for joining us today.